So, shh. first of all, two or three of you has asked me during the break something about the exam, and of course it's mm, something um, good to know. I, I mean, uh, the dates for the exams have been published, at least for the, 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 ex the exam seats of uh, July, okay? So uh, you see that there is a uh, 1st of July and 15th of July, okay? Um, actually, uh, the point is, uh, I told you, you have three weeks to prepare the project, so how do the project fit, does the project fit in, uh, in this uh, uh, exam schedule? Well, actually, before uh, submitting the project for the first uh, exam, Okay, you will see the text, so what is required for the project for the second exam, because we need to publish it three weeks before the second exam, right? So, um, this is a, an additional possibility that you have just uh, uh, in, um, in June, okay, before, before the first uh, date of the exam. So, before submitting the solution of the first exam, you can have a look at the, what is required for the second exam, okay? Which is typically not the case for September and for January, okay? And uh, <coughs> so you can decide to do whatever you like. You can submit the first one uh, and, and, um, and then uh, wait for the result and then try to submit for the second one. Or you can directly see, I don't know, the second one seems easier for me, I like it more. Whatever reason you, you have, no problem. Just forget working on the first one, you start working on the second one, and you will need to submit it before the deadline for the second exam, okay? By the way, the deadline will be the day before, okay? Midnight the day before of, the, of these dates. So, 1st of July and 15th of July, okay? Uh, we will come back to the exam rules and all this stuff, but maybe it's better that we uh, dedicate, uh, uh, let's say, 10, 15 minutes uh, uh, for, this, um, uh, for this topic as a whole, okay? But, you know, since, uh, of course, there's some, uh, let's say, <laughs> uh, students uh, get anxious about exams, uh, which, are, of course, understandable, I would like to clarify this point, okay? Any, any exam seat you choose, so any exam date you choose, you will always have three weeks. Okay, which also means that for September, remember, uh, we don't have the dates for September yet, but if they give it, uh, they give us, uh, I don't know, like uh, 7th of September, it means that we will publish uh, the uh, text of the exam in the middle of August. I know it's vacation, it's vacation for me, it's vacation for you, <laughs> okay, but you still have three weeks, okay? One day more, one day less, and depends, okay, but you know. And also at January, it means that, uh, um, you know, uh, if you have, let's say, the exam on the 21st of January, it means that uh, at New Year's, we will publish the text of the exam. I know it's, it's, fun, it's funny in a certain sense, but uh, I mean, it, it depends on which date they choose. I mean, I have no control on these dates. and. Basically, no teacher has control on these dates, okay? Also because it's, um, it's need to fit, uh, you know, the, um, uh, all, all the courses for all the teachers. As you see, I have another course, but there are teachers that have more than one course, okay? And other courses. And, and so on different course of studies and so on, so it's not easy to fit all the dates together, okay? It's not just... Uh, you know, that uh, they, they choose dates randomly, okay? But the, this should be the best compromise uh, uh, also with the other exam that you have in your course of study, especially with those dates, okay? Uh, okay, so, um, now we'll practice, okay, with the state, okay? So, we'll start uh, using the state. This function, const, use uh, something, use state, and so on, okay? And we will practice it uh, in our uh, example, okay? So, I already published 
and I already wrote it on Telegram, okay, last week. The example for this lecture, and today or tomorrow I will publish the example for the next lecture on Thursday, okay, which actually depends on what we do today because we will build on what to do we do today. That's why not yet there, okay. And you have uh, the this React QA state example because then we will have uh, React QA forms uh, for Thursday, okay. So we have two folders here in week zero eight. And in short, there's a basic application that we developed uh, last week, okay? So we have components, and we have only props and no state. Let's try to have a look at how it works, okay? So, first of all, um, let's run the application. So the first thing you need to do when you get uh, these uh, files out of GitHub is npm install, okay? And I already did it, so that's why it's so fast. Um, and then you run the application, and it should work. npm run dev, okay? We will always build a React application with Byte, the same framework for the whole course. And so there's uh, a, a URL to visit, you can also uh, well, see the help, okay? If you press O, it opens in the browser and so on. Sometimes it's convenient, okay? So that's a basic application. That's online, okay? I didn't uh, do any particular modification compared to last lecture. Just some small adjustment, you know, mm, formatting and stuff like that, but n nothing really different, okay? Um, and so, first of all, always check there are no errors in the console. Last time I forgot to tell you one thing, so I, I'm telling it now, okay? So you remember the story about the list, answer table, list of answers. The answer table is in the answer component. And I told you about the key, right? You need to have a key, unique key for the list. That's the same story about the objects in the state uh, today. I mean, React needs to be efficient in comparing the old uh, situation with the new situation, both in the components and in the state, okay? So you need to tell React in some ways what has changed, what has not. In the case of the components, you need the key on the, if you have lists, okay? Which are basically the arrays, okay? And um, if you remove the key, let's save, Okay, and uh, you see, uh, you, rea uh, you, you get, uh, you know, the page working, but React gives you a warning, and it only appears in the console, okay? So you need to remember to always have the console open, okay? We will uh, test your exam in this way. Okay, always with the, either the network tab or the console tab open, because we need to understand what you did, okay? So that's the best way. Typically the network tab, because uh, uh, there's the exchange between server and the client, but at the moment we don't have a server. I mean, we have a very simple server that just serves uh, one com uh, content that is the application, so there's no point in looking here now. You see, warning, each child in the list should have a unique key prop. Okay, and that is what we missed uh, before. Save and uh, reload, and you see this stuff has disappeared, okay? Okay, good, so now we need to think in terms of the state. So, what should we do? Uh, well, first of all, we have a vote button, right? But it's not working. Let's try to make this uh, vote button work, okay? Which is the implication of having this button work? Uh, it's that uh, we need to have something to change. Yes. So, changing something, remember something in the application. What should we remember? Well, actually, we should remember say the scores, fine, uh, 
Do you have other ideas? I mean, we can remember the scores, so it means that we should have a list of scores. But actually, we already have a list. You know that uh, we, are, we are passing as props the list of answers. The list of answers at the moment comes from up. So this list of answers, which is the answer list, the answer list comes actually from uh, an object uh, that uh, is simply uh, uh, fixed because we don't have the server, okay? So, uh, what's the list? Uh, uh, no, it was in the model, okay. So, it's this list, okay? So, it's just uh, fixed in the code, okay? But see, this is uh, like if this list comes from the server, okay? We don't have any way to load uh, this list from the server, at least until uh, next uh, week. Okay, well, actually the week after. But <coughs> uh, at a certain time, we'll come from the server. And here you have the scores, three, one, minus two, and so on, the one that you see in the application. And we would like this application to remember new information because we press vote and we would like to change the score, okay? And uh, so, if we would like the application to remember some value, we need to have a state, okay? We just need to decide in which form we need to put this state in the application. Well, here the thing is quite simple uh, in the sense that we already have a list, a list of um, um, objects that contain the information that we would like to show and also the information that we would like to change, including the score. Okay, so first of all, let's try to change this information that at the moment is fixed, it's just written in the code, okay, and allow this information to be changed by the application. So when I click, this click should, be, should have an handler that goes into a place, in a state, search for my element, and decide how to update the score. Okay, so in practice it does plus one, and this uh, change should be reflected automatically by React in the view. So uh, the, the page should update accordingly. The score should be changed and show four instead of three for the first row. Okay, so how do we introduce a state? Well, first of all, we need to decide where to put the state. Okay. The state, um, <coughs> well, le let's decide what to put in the state and then where to put it. So, what do we put in the state? In the state, we can put the list of the answers that we already have, okay? So, uh, we have the list of answers and where do we need the list of answers? The list of answer is used in the answer table, okay, where it is taken as a prop, which is passed by, by main, okay, component main in, in the file app.jsx, okay? So, well, uh, where do we want to put this uh, state? I mean, answer table is a possible solution, so we can put it into answer table. That should work, okay? Or we can put it into a component, which is up in the tree until the root, okay? If we plan to use this uh, um, this information um, outside uh, the answer table, okay? I mean, uh, I'm not expecting you to, uh, to guess uh, the, f the right thing at the first time. 
even when I develop, and sometimes uh, I, I, I think again of what I'm doing and I change the code, okay? So, uh, if you don't know what to do when you start developing, just uh, try with a reasonable guess, okay? With a reasonable plan in mind, and then if, if you, while you develop, if you discover it's wrong, you just change the things, okay? I try not to do too many mistakes while we are in the lecture because we don't have so much time, but, uh, you know, uh, we can have some variants and uh, they're still fine, okay? Uh, let's try to put this state here in May, okay? Just because uh, in this way we can uh, pass around some uh, set state functions and so on. So practice a little bit with what we discussed uh, this morning, okay? So how we define a state? Well, use a state is the function. Okay, uh, just make sure it's imported. No, it is not, okay? We'll import it later. Okay, const, use state, okay? And then let's define a name for the state, so the name of the variable. Let's say answers, okay? Since we decided to keep the answers list, Answers, and once we decide the name for the state, the rest is automatically decided. It's set with the same name, okay? Uh, uppercase first uh, character, answers, okay? Use state, an initial value, okay? That's the initial answer list, this answer list, right? So. Because in the beginning, we will, oops, no, we will like, let, let's type, answer list. Okay, in the beginning, we would like to have the answer list that is loaded from the server. At the moment, it's not loaded from the server, just specified in the code, which is actually the list that is shown in our application. Okay? Okay, fine. Uh, save. And let's try to run it. Okay, actually it's already running. Okay, and everything has disappeared. Why? Always check the console. My colleague Antonio uh, told me, when you are working in the lab, uh, most of you have only the browser window open. Always have the console open because, you know, most of the times uh, things uh, happen in the console, especially errors during development, okay? Reference error use state is not defined. Yes, I forgot it. So let's import the use, the use state. Okay. Uh, so import. Uh, actually, the place is more or less the same. I mean, just keep some order, but uh, just uh, for 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 reader uh, for the reader's convenience. Oops. Import. Uh, Use state from React, okay? Visual Studio Code suggests stuff, uh, and most of the time it's uh, it's uh, correct, okay? So let's I, I reload the application just to check if uh, the error is still there or not, okay? So the console is reset when uh, I reload the application. So no errors. I'm I'm fine. I'm glad. Okay. So, of course, nothing has changed. I just called the function inside my component, use state. I mean, I could call another function, math, uh, max, uh, whatever. I mean, nothing changes until I use uh, the values, okay? So, let's use the values. Where should I use this value? Answers. Actually, answers should be this answer list, right? Answer. Okay. Save. Check. Everything is fine. Hot updated means it's been reloaded. No error, so I don't reload again. Okay, but, but uh, so now this list comes from the state. Okay, it's not coming from the initial value of this answer list. Okay, which by the way it would be better to rename as uh, initial answer list. Okay, just not to be confused. Okay. 
Okay, fine. So now, now I have these answers. Still working, yes. Um, I need to make the button work, right? So vote, okay? I need to associate an handler to the button. So what is the button? Let's search it in the application. It was in the answer components, uh, T body answer row, answer row, that's a button vote. Okay. On click, don't know, at the moment I have nothing to do except, uh, let's say, let's do something just for making sure things work. Uh, console log uh, EID, okay? No, TD, what, what, did it? No, vote. Um, on click button, was like this, right? Yes, save. Okay. So let's reload just to make sure no errors. Okay. Click one, click two, click three, and so on. Okay? So there's an event handler attached to each of the button. But now I would like to attach a more meaningful event handler. So something that changes the content of the state. Okay? So when uh, you are, um, when you would like to change the state, uh, I suggest you that you write a function that change the state uh, within the same component where you define the state. Again, this is just for convenience because uh, so you see the state here and you see all the, all the functions that manipulate the state. And then you pass around these functions like we will do for the button, okay? So we'll pass around the function that uh, says, I don't know, upvote or something like this. Vote answer, okay? Uh, and uh, um, we will check what happens. But at least you see uh, the function that manipulates the state in the same place where you define the state, okay? And then you only need to search where you pass the, the function around uh, typically uh, to have it available in an event handler, okay? So let's define a function to uh, do this upvote, okay? Or let's say vote answer, okay? Uh, yeah, ID, okay? Uh, I mean, I need to tell which answer needs to be voted. I don't want to write four function because there can be seven answers and so on, okay? So I use the answer ID since the answer has an ID, as we saw before, was, uh, yes, there's an ID, one, two, three, four, okay? So I can use this ID. Uh, what's the, okay, my function. Okay, how do I change a state? Well, there's a function, set answers answers okay what do i write here i should write a new value for the state actually the state i i saw before it's an array okay so it should be a new array as i told you before the break when i change an array reacts wants a new array fine okay you remember the case uh, uh, was uh, this was an update okay so you have the example here just copy this example okay so map to iterate over the whole array and when we find the element that interests us we return something different from what's inside the array okay so we return the updated element okay uh, okay, so let's go here. Of course, we need to write uh, <laughs> some code here, okay? So let's say we write uh, answer list, okay? And then uh, um, 
Oh, of course. Uh, this uh, uh, the new value depends on the old value of the state, right? So I give for granted the fact that we are writing a callback function and not an immediate value. Okay? So it's wrong to 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 here to write uh, let's say uh, for e etc on answers. Okay? Uh, answers uh, etc equal to or uh, create a new answer before setting the answer and so on, okay? Everything else is wrong. So the only correct way of doing this uh, state modification is to write it in the callback function of the set answer, of the state state, okay? So any other thing you, thi you might imagine is wrong, okay? Uh, so, uh, answers list ans answer list no yes answer list uh, map that's an array so you get uh, the element of the array with the map and you need to return what has to be put into the new array so e id equal to uh, my id Yes, uh, I will create a new object. Okay, no. Well, okay. Otherwise, just E. So that's the old element. Okay, I don't need to change all the elements in the array. Only the one that have changed. So React knows which one has changed. Okay. Good. So what do we write here? That's not a spread. I don't want to write a spread here. I would like to write something that creates a new object because the answer, remember, the answer is an object, okay? And it has a number of fields. Actually, we would like to change just the score, okay? Which are the fields, uh, the score, ID, respond, score, etc. okay? So... Uh, how do I create a new object? My suggestion is to do as we did in the slides, right? No, well, well, if you do like in the slides, you need to recreate all the properties of the object by hand. Otherwise, you copy the old object, creating a new object, and then you set the new property, okay? Let's do this second way so you see something different. So object assign. New object, the old object, and the new object that will overwrite the property of the old object, that is the score, okay? Score that is taken from the old plus one, okay? Why does uh, something object assign e? Okay, okay, we don't need to the semicolon at the end because if we write it li like an arrow function, the value, um, I mean, the arrow function is the parameter that we pass uh, at the set answer, so it cannot be the semicolon, okay? So this is the same thing that we did on the slides, okay? Uh, just that uh, here uh, we create a new object by hand and in the code we copy the old object so we object assigned with the new object will create an, a, another reference for the object okay so it will be another object where we copy all the all properties of the old object that is e and then we overwrite the property of the old object, which actually is a new object because the assign will work on the new object, and we will write a score plus one, okay? Hope, I hope it's clear. And then we have this vote answer. You see the color is not used now, okay? So we need to call this vote answer. So in short, we need to have this vote answer as the action that is performed when we click on the 
vote button. Okay? So everything should be working at the moment, yes, but the handler is still the old one, right? We need to change this handler. And then we are done. So um, let's pass the vote answer as an additional props uh, to the answer table. Okay, so, which is, yeah, vote. I choose the name of the props, okay? So vote is my choice, it's just the name I choose. Vote, uh, vote, answer. Okay, you can use the same name, it's fine. I would like to use different names to show you where things match. So I use a different name for the prop because I don't want you uh, think that uh, because you define a, a function with a certain name, it automatically gets passed. You need to pass it manually, okay? So vote, vote answer, and now, in, so let's save. Don't forget to save, that's another really annoying um, error that happens when you develop. And then in answer table, we will get props vote. So there will be props vote, props vote, okay? That is a function that we need to pass to the answer row, okay? So again, I think I use the same name this time. Uh, just copying from here because uh, so it's easier when I put uh, the whole solution online in case we don't finish. Uh, so we pass vote, props vote that we got as a props from answer table to answer row. And so now in answer row, I will have a props vote. Okay? Where I add the console log. Okay, just to try. Okay? Save. Uh, let's try. Oops. Let's click on vote. Uh, I wanted to resize it a little bit. It doesn't work. Click on vote. Oh, the score works. You see? Every time I click, it changes. Okay? That's automatic. That's the way React uh, works uh, and helps you. You just set the new state, the rest happens automatically. That's the advantage of using a framework for, uh, to program uh, a, a JavaScript application. Okay? The framework is in charge of updating the view, what is shown to the user. If it doesn't do this action, it's mostly useless, okay? You should go back to what you did in the past labs and append child create element and all this stuff, but that's really annoying, okay? The reason why you use React is because you change props, you change state, and the appearance changes automatically, okay? You just uh, create the architecture, the tree of the components, and then the view is uh, updated automatically by React, okay? So the view is kept aligned with the, what your components uh, give back in the return statement, okay? And if they use the state, what is shown will be the state, okay? If they use the props, what is shown it will be the props. Okay, fine. I hope everything is clear until now. Let's, let's commit it because this is a very important, let's say, uh, addition. This is uh, week 07, no, it doesn't matter. State changes. Okay, uh, added state uh, to, for, to make vote work. Okay. Uh, I need to uh, add. This is just to push uh, 
immediately without uh, putting the password every time. Okay. So here you should have the, the new version as well. Yes, at the state and so on. Okay. So you have the intermediate step also available on the GitHub. And so, well, we already uh, have a good uh, achievement. I mean, there's a state, there's uh, a function that modifies the state. We passed around the function to the place where it needs to be modified in the form of a handler that is called only when the user interacts and in particular it clicks on vote. And the rest happens automatically. Okay? So, we can say we finished for today. No, not yet. Okay? Let's try to do something more difficult. Okay? Let's try to delete an element from the list. Okay? So, we have a list with the, the application. I cannot move it anymore. Ah, okay. Okay, so let's add the button delete. Okay, and then try to delete uh, something from this uh, list. Okay. So, first, let's decide uh, where to put uh, the button. Okay. I think the, the best place is here, right? We had the action, actions, we could call them actions, okay? <laughs> but, but this is not really important. The actions were, well, below answer table in, in the tree. I'm thinking about the tree, the component tree. So table uh, had the answer row, and the answer row had a button. We could add a second button, right? Actually, just to remember what we learned uh, last time, since this uh, place with the button is becoming more complex, and in short, uh, I will uh, add uh, an additional button as well, in addition to, to delete, uh, maybe it's better to create a component for that part of the page. Okay? So, um, we... Uh, rehearse a little bit what we saw last time. Okay, so how do we create a component? Just a function. Function uh, answer actions. Actions. Okay. Props. Return. Okay. That's a component. The basic skeleton of the component. And then uh, what should we put here? Well. Let's take the button that is already there. Okay. And let's add a second button. Okay. What's, what's the code? Okay. Uh, vote and then delete. Okay. Let's make it red. Uh, you should check online what's a what's red color name for a bootstrap which should be danger okay don't don't be too you know afraid of this stuff i mean just to make it things nicer but everything i mean we we don't really care which color is your application at the exam right so i mean uh, as as you can see i'm not really caring about uh, the formatting and stuff as long as everything can be seen and used uh, reasonably that's fine, okay? This is not a user design, a, a, a user interface uh, design course, okay? There are other courses like this, if you like, but in, in computer engineering, I don't think they are, they're probably free choices for, for the um, cybersecurity course of study. Okay, so, uh, for the moment, the delete button does exactly the same thing as the, as the vote uh, button. Okay, so why is uh, this uh, Visual Studio complaining about <laughs> this, uh, this way of writing? Let's try to save. Okay, it's not just Visual Studio. It's somebody else uh, that says, uh, internal server error is, uh, adjacent. 
JSX elements must be wrapped in an enclosing tag. Did you want a JS fragment? You remember the fragment? Okay. For each component, there should be only one root of the uh, component tree. Okay. So we cannot just put two elements at the same level. We should either enclose them in, a, in another component, like a div or span, which are typically the transparent component for HTML, or if we don't want the HTML component for some reasons, like in tables, typically they don't work very well, we just use the fragment. You remember the fragment? Okay? Uh, okay. Save. Okay. So, that was the only problem. If it happens in the lab tomorrow or on the, the next week, we will be there to help you. Okay? But, uh, you know, uh, you will get used to this kind of stuff. I mean. um, okay. So instead of using the button here, we will use the answer, answer actions, right? Yes. Okay. I made it as a self-closing component because there are no children, no need to use children. Okay. So slash uh, greater than sign. Uh, but it requires a prop, a props vote. So vote equal props vote props vote. Okay. Save. Let's try if it works. Yeah. Delete. No. E is not defined. Okay. So we have something to debug. Nice. Okay. Props vote. No, actually it was not props. No, props vote. Okay. Answer uh, ah, E, E here. Okay. So we need to pass uh, E, the answer. Okay. Answer. Right. How do we call it? Mm. Nice. Okay. We could do something like this. Answer E. Okay. Pros, vote, answer. Answer. ID. Okay. So I passed the answer, which was one of the props that I passed to answer row, because then I need the ID and I passed it with the name answer. So I get a, a props, props, answer ID, props, answer ID. Okay. Let's see if it works. Yes. Now the delete button, of course, does the same as the vote. Okay, but at least it works. Okay? Without giving errors. Okay. I would like to show you a variant before we go on. Okay? Um, we could, uh, instead of passing the answer, uh, which is fine. I mean, this is a possibility. Fine. Okay? Instead of passing the answer, why I don't directly pass the callbacks to be used here? Like a props uh, vote uh, uh, upvote. Okay. Uh, for the moment, let me put the same here. Props uh, upvote. Okay. So upvote. Props uh, vote but I need to pass the ID, right? Where do I put the ID? Here I pass the reference to the function, but not the ID. I mean, this function is generic and needs a, to have a parameter. I, I'm back to, you know, to the fact that I should have a parameter. But remember, you can pass any function. So instead of passing the function as I got it uh, through the props, uh, I can create a new function, okay, that I pass as props to the answer actions that uh, is specific for that answer. 
So I can create on the fly a new function, typically a narrow function because I want to I would like to do it in the in the brackets. Okay. Props vote e id. Okay. So instead of passing vote, which is useless because then I don't have the parameter on which I need to call this function, I pass a new function defined as an arrow function that doesn't take parameters. So here they don't it doesn't take parameters. Uh, I wanted to select this. Okay. No parameters taken and it will only call the props vote with a certain parameter EID. Okay? Which cannot be modified by the answer action, but I don't actually need to modify them. Okay? And of course, every time answer row is created, an answer row is created from the list of the table, okay, it will get a different E, and so the EID will be different, okay? So I create a new functions, a new function each time I create a new answer action components, one for each row, which have, uh, which, uh, for which the ID is already set, okay? Let's see if this stuff works. Well, there are no errors, so that's good. Yeah, it still works. Okay? Let me show you one thing more before uh, going on and develop the delete action. Okay? I just reload uh, the application for clarity. Okay? Remember, you have this uh, uh, tab components if you installed the, the um, React uh, extension and we can have a look at the state you see if i click no what is container row uh, i wanted to show you this the state should be yeah, yeah okay main okay main is the component that contains the state and you can inspect the state, okay? There's no props, uh, there's just one state uh, that contains the list of answers. Indeed, there are four answers, okay? And you can navigate in the answers and see, you know, the object and all this stuff, okay? Unfortunately, you don't have the name of the state here, so there's no name, uh, the, there, is, mm, there, uh, there is no name in the sense the name of the variable handling the state because uh, it's in the code okay and it cannot be extracted easily by react okay we will come back on this point when we talk uh, shortly about how hooks work uh, work inside the react i mean but this is not fundamental to to understand the fundamental thing is that there is just one state here and there's just one state here if we have two states, there will be the first one and the second one, and here in the debugger, there will be the first one and the second one, okay? Fine. Okay, let's make the delete work. Well, for the delete, again, we need to modify the, um, the um, state. And I already gave you uh, the the way to do this, right? That's a filter, right? So filter returns a new array. Remember, we need to return a new array. Why? Because the new array depends on the old array, on the old state. So function delete answer. Okay. Again with the ID. The ID is fine. And what should we do? We should do as before, set uh, answers, answer list, arrow, uh, and then, well, a filter is easier to write. Answer list, filter. We need a callback that takes the element and decide if we want to keep it or not. So we need to write a Boolean expression that is true for all the elements except one. So EID, 
is different from our ID, okay? Uh, and that's all. The filter will keep all the elements that don't match our ID because the expression evaluates true, it's different, for all the elements except our ID, okay? The save, at the moment we are not using the delete answer, so there's no point in, in trying the application. I mean, just check that no, no errors are present, but I mean, we just added a function. We need to pass this function, delete answer. So, delete, delete answer. Delete answer. Props comes for free. We can pass as many props as we like, okay? So we pass an additional prop to answer table and we go into answer table and we will pass this additional prop to, uh, to the answer row. Delete, props, delete. Because I, I call it delete in up, right? Delete and delete. These props delete should match the delete that I wrote in up. And then I have this answer row. And again, I need to use the same uh, strategies before. Upvote uh, here is delete. And again, I define a callback on the fly to be used, so I pass a function in short. Props, delete, e, e id. okay? I could have defined these uh, callbacks also at the previous level, directly in answer table, when creating the list. That was another option, okay? Mm. I mean, it's up to me. Mm, doesn't really change that much. And of course, I called uh, this uh, property delete, I need to use it, delete, okay? Delete, so saved, no errors here, no errors here, let's try if it works. Uh, let me see, okay, let's press on the first one and let's see if it disappears. Yes, it disappears, so it works, okay? So we can delete everything. And then, and then nothing, <laughs> okay? N and then the rest is next lecture. Adding is more complex because to add something, we need to type something, right? We need a form. We need a place where we need to be able to type or insert things. Uh, so there are forms. Uh, uh, the, the slides are already online. You can have a look, but uh, I mean, things are more complex because we need to handle a state uh, for each field in the form and so on. So. First, we need to understand how the state works uh, in a simple case, and then we'll try to use it in a more complex case, okay? So, uh, how do we handle this situation now? Well, as you did last time, I mean, you just reload the application, and it starts back from scratch, and since, uh, you know, the, the data is uh, defined in the code, it will reinitialize our list, so our state, with the full amount of data with the initial value that we put in the, in the code, okay? So just reload and restart and, and then try again, okay? So nothing really difficult in this case. Of course, if we have a server, that's a different story. We can go and ask the server, uh, etc. But at the moment, we don't have the server, so we just use the code, uh, what is written in the code, okay? So, uh, I would like to draw your attention on uh, a few things before uh, we, we finish, but it's still early, we can make an additional modification. So, um, let's have a look here at the important part. That's a state, right, where the state is defined. You see, the first time when we load the application, this row is executed by JavaScript, so use state is called, and the initial answer list is passed, okay? And so the answers will contain, in this case, immediately the initial value, okay? And indeed, we will be able to 
execute the rest of the code and uh, you know um, uh, and React will render the application with the data that is set here as initial value, okay? And then in asynchronous interaction happens, so me, user, is clicking on the buttons and it's activating event handlers that will call in the end the set answers that will modify the state by modifying the state asynchronously passing a callback to React saying, I would like to do this modification. React takes note of the fact that it would like to do this modification, and then it performs the modification. If the application is more complex, you, can, you might have clicked somewhere else, it might have loaded some data in the, in the meanwhile, and so on, and everything is ended by React. At a certain point, React will decide it needs to re-render your component because the value of answers has changed. And indeed, that's what we did with the map and the filter. We created a new array. So React is forced to analyze the content of the state again because we modified the reference to the array. And then, depending on what, uh, what is changed in the state, it will update the view accordingly. Okay? So it will not re render the rows that uh, have not changed but it will render again the rows that have changed, like with the, with the um, vote. When we modify the vote, that row will be re-rendered. The rest will not. No, there's this virtual DOM, there's the new virtual DOM, it makes the comparison and it needs to make it efficiently and that's why we need to create the new reference and all this stuff. And then, it will update the actual DOM, so what is actually seen by the user in the browser window, by only updating the part of the DOM that have changed. Indeed, we, we don't see you know, the window flicker. We only see that a small part has changed, right? So we vote, and you see the result, uh, without you know, seeing that the application will redraw everything and so on. Of course, this is very simple application, so we probably didn't, wouldn't see it uh, in any case. But if the application is more complex, uh, only the parts that are needed are updated. Okay? Uh, of course, you can make this application nicer if you like. Okay? Uh, like, uh, uh, no, what's the... Uh, we can play a little bit, but just to show you something, um, you can make the button nicer, like, uh, no, where are the buttons uh, here? Instead of delete, you can uh, use the bootstrap icon, right? So class name uh, um, B, B trash. Okay, I hope I imported the uh, icons, yes. So, you know, you get this uh, trash icon and all this stuff, okay? But this is just, uh, you know, for show, but you need to have some satisfaction when you are programming, <laughs> otherwise it gets boring, okay? Let's do an additional modification. So, let's say that uh, in addition to vote, uh, that means up voting, we can also down vote, okay? So, a third button, okay? So, let's say we have a, a, an additional button. Uh, no, I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to duplicate the, the first one, not the trash. Okay, so, down vote. Uh, let me play a little bit. So let's put uh, arrow up and arrow down. Uh, copy, paste. Uh, you need to look at uh, this stuff in, in the internet. Um, you'll see the, the, the icons. And now I, I will give you the name, but uh, oh, down, okay? And we can do the same for, for no. Um. Off. Okay. No. 
sorry this is this computer makes me up okay so up down and so on but uh, I mean the important thing is not the icon is the fact that you know we should uh, use another function since uh, you know we passed the upvote the only thing that upvote does is you know voting up okay so downvote uh, so an additional prop uh, so let's make downvote props uh, vote okay I know we could make it upvote, downvote, and so on. Of course, you are free to reorganize your function as you deem appropriate. So, like uh, this vote could also take the a second parameter, like plus one and minus one. I mean, depends on how we define it, right? So, uh, yes. What's the problem here? Uguale, uh, down vote, uh, props down vote. Well, very prima. Ah, okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so we go back uh, in up uh, and we change the, the vote. Uh, function a little bit vote answer id and uh, delta what was the name i used delta i think delta and then you add the delta right so instead of plus one plus delta so you only pass one function vote answer that's vote and then you use it vote uh, one vote minus one okay let's see if it works up and down okay so that's the down button and the up button okay i mean it's up to you to define both the properties that you pass from one component to another and how you pass especially the functions that you need to change the state in the upper level components okay you could even pass an object that contains all the functions i don't recommend this solution because it's less readable because as we said last time you know properties also work as sort of documentation if you pass three properties means there are three things that you need to pass to this object to make it work to this component actually to make it work so I mean, try to use these things in a meaningful way, okay? Uh, but actually, you're free to pass whatever you like. If you would like to create three functions in the, in the main, uh, upvote, downvote, uh, delete, you can do it, okay? If you would like to pass the function down to the answer actions uh, together with the ID and call them with the ID as parameter here, you can do it. It's up to you, okay? Uh, you know, it's like programming. After a while, you get used to this uh, way of thinking and you'll try to find uh, a way of programming that, that is suited for the way you think and the way you would like to develop. Okay? So, one, since we have a bit of time, one very last thing is uh, just to, you know, just aesthetics. So. We don't really like these buttons, one attached to the other, right? <laughs> okay? I mean, you can always uh, use uh, uh, um, uh, bootstrap uh, uh, classes for formatting, okay? Just use class name, okay? As we do with the names of the icons, uh, M -I -C MX1, okay? Save. This creates a, a bit of margin x in the x direction, okay, between one element and the other, okay? Save. Okay? 
Maybe things have moved a little bit around in the layout. Really, I don't care, okay? And we will not care uh, uh, that much at the exam. I mean, not that, uh, as long as the application remains usable, we will not care uh, at all, okay? Because we don't want you to spend time, you know, thinking about uh, the class name, what's the, the way of doing the layout uh, so that, uh, you know, things don't move and so on. Instead of thinking about uh, states, uh, properties, uh, uh, the life cycle of the components, the force, the way you interact with the server, and all the security implication in your application, okay? That is what is evaluated, not the aspect of the application, okay? So, of course, you want to have a bit of satisfaction. Now the application is working, you would like to make it nice, fine, okay? But do it as the last thing, okay? Uh, okay, uh, I think it's more or less, should be all, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, we, uh, and of course, everything re uh, remains uh, um, available here in the debugger. Like, uh, you see, answer actions, you will see there are props, uh, three props, three functions. You even see the name. Okay, so you can expect everything. Of course, this this button, well, it's uh, yeah, one click up vote, but we we it's not our the answer row and all this stuff. Okay, you can debug everything, so there are no excuses. <laughs> of course, in the lab we can help you, but I mean, when you are alone, use these debug tools because otherwise you will get stuck on some errors without thinking, without knowing what is wrong, okay? So always check the console, always check the React Inspector, okay? So I think uh, it was a, a sort of intense lesson today, <laughs> okay? So uh, if you have any questions, I'm glad to answer the questions, otherwise you will have lab tomorrow, okay? So, still on just properties. Of course, you can experiment with state as well, since we did it today, okay? But the lab is focused only on create your application with React components and props. And then will be a next lab the next week where you introduce the state, okay? So, basically, you will do what we did today, okay? So, we will meet again uh, on Thursday for the lecture. Uh, uh, Wednesday is uh, holiday, but Thursday is not. So please come to the lecture on Thursday, okay? At one in room 16, okay? I will commit this code as soon as the lecture finishes. Okay, no questions, so thank you, and see you on Thursday, but tomorrow there's the lab with my colleague Antonio, okay? Thank you. <laughs>